All right, let's do this one last time. Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse is the sequel to Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse that came out five years earlier. People had a lot of time to build up some lofty expectations. Does this movie meet them? Does it exceed them? Or is it a disappointment in a way? Let's talk about the film right now on Adam Does Movies. If you're new to the channel, feel free to use that web slinger and shoot the subscribe button. I would appreciate any newcomers that join. I post tons of movie content each and every week. Would love to have you stick around. Listen, I'm not going to beat to dead Uncle Ben Parker. This movie's really good. It did exceed expectations in some ways, and in others, it let me down a little bit. But overall, really dug this film. Visually speaking, this movie is stunning. It's doing things the first film didn't, for better and worse. Now, while overall I thought it was a very pretty looking picture, oftentimes thinking, man, this could be framed and put up on a wall, it is artwork through and through. But beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And when you have a bunch of different art styles, sometimes there's clashing, Sometimes there's conflicting thoughts on whether this works in this scene or works in that scene. And that is a problem in this film. Because it goes way in on the visuals, sometimes that comes at the cost of the storytelling. Example, we have Gwen Stacy, who's one of the main characters in this one. She has just as much screen time as Miles Morales does. Her world is very watercolor heavy. Looks fantastic. But there are emotional moments there are emotional beats that don't quite hit as hard because they're having so much fun playing with the animation style that you kind of get a little lost. The message gets disrupted because the background's doing weird stuff or they're constantly shifting between colors and, and art forms. It does get a little jarring and it did take me out a couple times during the film when there were parts that were supposed to hit. And they, they did, but not quite as hard as they should have. Especially when you compare it to the first. Into the Spider-Verse, also absolutely gorgeous. And I like that it was more consistent with the style. It, it kind of had one centralized one, and then they would throw different splashes of ideas here and there. This movie's not only playing with the different mediums, it's jumping to real life stuff, it's got Lego stuff, it's all over the place. And that can make things a little disjointed. It can make things jarring at times. While that works as a con in some ways, it absolutely is a pro. Because the movie keeps you guessing what's next. The movie is constantly doing new things and throwing you for twists and turns. And because it's so visually exciting, you are excited to keep watching this thing, which is good. Because it's a long movie. It's two hours and 20 minutes. Very long for an animation, especially when you're bringing little kids. And I will say the first 15 minutes is kind of slow and somber, which is going to be hard for the little ones to sit through. But I think for the most part, there's enough color, there's enough exciting action going on that they won't have a problem getting through this thing. That said, this movie is definitely geared more towards teenagers and older. There are a couple swear words thrown in. It's a little spicier this time. I'd say it's a hard PG. It's a PG-13 movie, really. Since I'm on presentation, let's talk music. The rap from the first movie, the hip hop, that, that's kind of subdued here. There's a lot of different flavors of music as well. Since we're in the Spider-Verse, we're jumping to a lot of different places with a lot of different representation. And that means a lot of different spider people. I was worried going in that because this film is so much more zany and so much larger in scale, because Miles is not staying in his world, he's going to all these different ones, that the movie was going to lose that grounded focus on the character. Thankfully, those concerns washed away very quickly. It is very much a Miles movie and Gwen Stacy. They are the focus. There's tons of small, intimate moments with these characters, with their families, and with the main objective. Are there fan service call-outs? Absolutely. Do some of them feel out of place? For sure. But overall, this is an exciting movie that from beginning to end keeps you hooked. Now for my big criticism. I love Into the Spider-Verse. I really liked Across the Spider-Verse. Didn't love this one as much. Although there are sections of this thing that I absolutely adore. The storyboard team, the animation department, everyone involved in some of these sections of the film should be commended. It is so unique. It's such a special movie. And Disney should be looking at movies like this and saying, 
hey, remember when we used to do innovative, cool things, and now we just rest on our laurels and we come out with the same live action crap year after year. But Across the Spider-Verse is so fresh, it's so unique, and genuinely its own thing. This is a really special movie from a visual standpoint, and the story is no slouch either. But it's an incomplete one, and that's the point I'm getting at here. This is a two-part movie, and it's two hours and 20 minutes long. There's no conclusion, there's no resolution. It's okay to have a cliffhanger. Matrix Reloaded had a cliffhanger. Back to the Future Part 2 had a cliffhanger. The Lord of the Rings movies are obviously three-parters, but they still felt self-contained. It felt like there was closure, even though there was a larger story to tell. I didn't get that feeling from Across the Spider-Verse. Not one part of this movie felt like a complete second chapter. It really is just part one of part two. Some people won't mind that, but for the last 20 minutes, I'm sitting there watch as they kind of slow roll tease everything for the next outing. And I was just getting a little frustrated. You have that background ambiance that's building and building and building. You're getting all these different montages of characters and what they're up to. And all I'm thinking in the back of my mind is they're not going to give us resolution to any of this. This is a really slow burn preview for what's to come. And that kind of bummed me out. But you separate my own little hangups with it. I don't see anyone not liking this film. And I see a lot of people adoring it. The returning cast, fantastic as ever. The newcomers bring something to the table. They're all fresh and fun. I like all of them. I like everything about this crew. And now I'm very upset that I have to wait what will feel like an eternity for this second half to come out so I can complete the story. My thoughts on this one will probably go up even more once I find out how it ends. Even Kill Bill Volume 1 had more closure than this thing. Hopefully, we don't get Kill Bill Volume 2 for the second half. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Please, again, like the video and subscribe if you're new here. I'd love to have you stick around. I post tons of movie content. Those are my thoughts on Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Have you seen it? Let me know. I appreciate you watching, and hopefully, I see you next time. Take care.